Alright, so what we're going to take a look at now, hopefully, is the more difficult vector problem. This one's going to be a kind of complicated one. So I'm going to define a vector d. I think I've got that in range. So it's a vector d, and I'm going to say that it is equal to vector a plus vector b minus vector c, okay? And so now, I'm going to give you vectors a, b, and c, and we're going to see if we can evaluate this. So, vector a looks like this. It has a magnitude, a total length of 4, and it has an angle at 30 degrees with the horizontal, the positive x direction, okay? So I've got a sub x, my x component of a, and a sub y, and we'll see if we can find those. So the next vector is going to be b. That's a very ugly looking b, but I understand it has a very good sense of humor. It looks like this, and it makes an angle of 135 degrees with a positive x. I'll be careful not to get a screechy, crying noise. Total length of 3. If I look at this, I've got a y component here, b sub y, and an x component here, b sub x. And so finally, I've got vector c. Vector c, where have I got that guy? He looks a little weird. I'm going to switch out chalk because I think this one wants to cry. So here's vector c has a total magnitude of 2, and it makes an angle over here with a positive x-axis of 120 degrees. This is actually a minus 120 because it's underneath the positive x-axis. I've got a y component here, c sub y, and an x component here, c sub x. Okay, And so with this being a 90 degree angle, we know that this right here is 120 minus 90 degrees gives me 30 degrees. So I can actually start solving my triangles here. This guy is a right triangle, or I'm sorry, a right angle, because that's pointed straight up. So 135 minus 90, that gives me a 45 degree angle here. Okay, so I'm going to do this kind of quickly. You can check some of the other videos to have an idea, but our key thing to find our components, because that's what we want to do. We take these vectors, we can't add them directly, we can't just say 4 plus 3 minus 2 gives me 5, or is that, yeah, 7 minus 2. We can't do that, because that doesn't keep our direction accounted for. And vectors are more than just their total length, their magnitude, they're also direction. So what we need to do is we need to split them into components. Our x, our y, x and y for each of those. Then we can add our x's together because it's all in the x direction, so we're keeping track of our direction. We can do the same thing with the y, and that keeps track of our direction in the y. And then we can build our final vector out of its components, okay? So this way keeps both the values, the total lengths, our magnitudes of the vector, and their directions. That's why we're going to do it that way. But for that, we need to be able to find our components. So we're going to use so, ka, koa. Take a look at the other videos. If you're not too familiar with it, I'm going to try and move a little bit quickly here. I can tell from ka, because I like to find x components first. In respect to my vector a, I've got a triangle here. I want to find my a sub x. It's the adjacent side to the angle I know, 30 degrees. So I want to use ka. So cosine of 30 degrees equals a sub x divided by 4. When I solve that, I find that my a sub x equals 4 times cosine of 30 degrees, okay? a sub x equals, let me find that, 3.46. I'll find that my a sub y is going to be equal to 4 sine 30 degrees, and a sub y equals 2. Alright, 
Now I'm going to do the same things over here. My b sub x, my x component up here, well that's going to be my opposite side. So I'll find that b sub x. And again, work this out if you don't understand where I'm getting it from using SOCA TOA. Okay? You'll have the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse for CA. And then I solve for that adjacent side that I want. And I end up with 3. What is that? In this case, for my x, I find that it's the opposite side. So I would use sine 45 degrees. Okay? And I'll find my b sub x equals 2.12. But hang on a second. Which direction is it pointed in? Well, it's pointed off to the left. That's normally our negative x direction. So I'm going to put a minus sign on there. Okay? Remember over here on our a, it pointed off to the right like normal, so I've got a positive sign. I could switch it around where I say that anything pointed to the left is positive. It's a little weird, but I could do it. But then I'd have a minus sign here and a positive sign here. Any way you look at it, one of these needs to be negative because they're pointed in opposite directions. All right? So now when I solve my b sub y, I'll find that it is 3 cosine 45 degrees. And I'll find that b sub y equals 2.12 as well, because 45 degrees tells me that that's actually an isosceles triangle. I don't draw things to scale. And so now I need to double check, is it positive or negative? Well, it's pointed up, so I'm going to call that positive. That's what I did over here in a as well. a sub y, my y component, it points up, so it's going to be positive. So finally, let's take a look at c. Okay? So c sub x equals, in this case, we've got 30 degrees here. <coughs> Pardon me. My x component is opposite of that, so I would use so katoa again. In this case, I'd go with so, and I would find that it is equal to 2 sine 30 degrees. So c sub x actually equals, yes, 1. But wait, which direction is it pointed in? My y is going down, my x is pointed to the left, so I've got a minus sign there. My c sub y, I'll find is equal to 2 cosine 30 degrees. I'll find that c sub y equals 1.73, but it's pointed down, so it also gets a minus sign. Okay, well, we're doing pretty well, though I'm starting to run out of board space. I probably could have planned this a bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these together. I've got, oops, actually, let me do this as, no, don't fall. D sub x equals a sub x plus b sub x minus, remember we've got our minus up here because it's a plus b minus c minus c sub x. And we'll have the same thing, hopefully I'm not cutting it off on the bottom, but the same thing with the y, we'll have a sub y plus b sub y minus c sub y. Now I'll find that d sub x, when I add those up, I'll plug in, for a sub x it's 3.46 plus uh, minus 2.12 minus a negative 1, so that would become plus 1, I end up with, my d sub x is 2.34, and I do the same thing in the y, and I find out that it is 5.85. We're almost done. Okay, well, I'm going to take some space back now that we know what our d sub x and d sub y are. I'm going to erase my c components over here so that we've got some room to build our final vector and get our answer. So both of these are positive, that's good. So my d sub x is going to move over to the right because it's positive, and it is 2.34. And my d sub y, my y component, is going to go up 5.85, and that is a train in the distance. I apologize. We want to find our theta with respect to the positive x-axis. Well, luckily it's just this angle here. And we want to find our total length of d, the magnitude of d. Well, I can use Pythagorean theorem, where 
a, b, c, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I solve that the magnitude of d is 6.3, okay? And then finally, I'll use my TOA for tangent of my theta equals opposite 5.85 over adjacent 2.34. I'll take my inverse tangent of both sides. Sorry, I have to write it up a little bit there, but it's just taking the inverse tangent. So that's on your calculator, usually hitting the shift and then the tangent button. So we're undoing what the tangent does. We end up with theta equals 68.2 degrees. So in the end, my D vector I'm going to write it right here. D vector equals 6.3 at 68.2 degrees. And since I don't have it marked with anything else, that is with respect to the positive x-axis. Okay? So there's my result. As a reminder of what we did, we found out our relationship that our D vector is A plus B minus C. But remember, they're vectors, so we have to keep their direction in, in place, too. We've got to add that up. So what we did is we took our a vector, which is this guy. We found our x component and our y component. We did the same thing with b and c, which I totally erased for some room. But we found out their components. We paid careful attention to make certain that anything going to the right or up was positive in the x and y directions, respectively. And anything to the left or down would end up being negative. We keep track of those signs, because what we found out was the values we got from C, because we were subtracting it off and they were both negative, we actually added the numbers that we got up. And so in the end, we found our X component and our Y component of our vector D, 2.34 and 5.85 in this case. I drew my triangle. They're both positive, so I draw it to the right and draw it up. And then I solved my triangle for the total length, the hypotenuse and my angle so that I can give it in proper vector notation, okay? So this is kind of a complicated one where we add many vectors together, in this case three, and we also threw in a subtract in there, okay?